God. You believe Jesus is a prophet. And only thing is remaining is the look into the life of Prophet Muhammad. If his message sound to you, and if you think, nah, he, he cannot be a liar, or he cannot be deluded, or he cannot be someone who's mad, and he is speaking the truth, then all is needed to accept Islam. Sounds simple, doesn't it? Yeah. So I'll give you three criteria, right? So when you talk about his character, he was given a title called Al Amin and As Sadiq. As Sadiq Al Amin means the most trustworthy and the most truthful. Even the non Muslim at that time, they used to accept him as one of the genuine sources. Imagine you are a different belief than mine, but you are so trustable that when my internal dispute happened between my, my own religious group, I come to you. Mm -hmm. That shows a lot about you, correct? Sure. So Prophet Muhammad was arbitrator between uh, the Quraysh, which following a different religion than him, because he was not engaging himself in idol worship. Then he was known to be the most trustworthy person because they used to, they didn't have formal banks at that time. So if you have, if you want to keep your valuable, you'd not chose a liar, you chose the best one, right? So they used to choose Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So that is his character. And he was known to be the historian, the linguistics all over the world. There are hundreds of thousands of books have been written on the character of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi in his life. And he was the most revered person in the planet. Everywhere in the planet, someone is praying and making dua that Allah bless Prophet Muhammad, bless Abraham, you know. So we find that if someone is truthful, then he cannot be a liar at the same time. Yes. So, Why he, should you lie? But he, have, he could have an agenda. Okay. Now, what, people lie with all agenda. If the lie makes him to get money, fame, authority, he would lie. Right? Now, hear my message up. When he was preaching that message, the pagans, the pagan didn't like him to preach the message because Prophet Muhammad is telling them not to worship those idols and so, but worship the, the God alone, right? This was his key message. They were offering him money, wealth, women in one condition. Stop preaching that message. So, if he was a liar, or someone who is after woman and power. He would have simply, okay, now I manage the deal. Let me get the power, authority and woman and I live happily. Did he do so? No. What did he do? He knew they will throw him out from his own home. He knew he will be prosecuted. What did he chose? The path of prosecution? Yes, he did. He knew it's coming. Why? Because he knew, he believed his truth. That's one condition. So he cannot be a liar because the man never lied his entire life. Why do he make a lie? And if he lie that allows him to receive prosecution, then he shouldn't lie even in the first place, right? So it doesn't make no sense that he should lie. Then can he be deluded? We know he's not deluded, not, nor he's a crazy because he's a state leader. He was known to be the most trustworthy person. I mean, it doesn't make sense. Someone is deluded. If you are deluded, I would not keep my valuable stuff with you. Right? So, now we have his character. Signify that he is truthful. Then, he was relating to the stories of the Prophet. Now, imagine there is no Jews around. No Christian around. How did he know about these names, Abraham? Imagine if you are born in this place. And you never have a contact about any parts of the world, nor no mobile phone. Would you be able to tell details about the other parts of the world? No. no. How did Prophet Muhammad telling the Abraham preached one uh, 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 the message of one God, uh, Moses preached one God? How did he even know the message of Jesus? Why? There is no Christian around. Why he is defending Jesus Christ? You know, he was defending Jesus Christ. 
Yes. Right. So now, why should he do that? And how did he know that? The only plausible option he is receiving from God. God communicated this message. But do you not think that this message is convincing to become a Muslim? Because this is enough compelling evidence. And then again, we have Quran placed many challenges, people that look, this is the book, this is the word of God. And if we, there are many challenges to find a contradiction, find an error, like a God's book must not have any contradiction. Do you agree? I, right. I guess yes and no. There's inter interpretation, so it's people through ages can. No, no, no. My, my, my. When we say contradiction, contradiction meaning, I said, you are an engineer, and another place I said you are not engineer. It's contradiction, right? Sure. So when we look at Quran, we find no contradiction in a, in a, in a sense that it doesn't say something which says something opposite right. so it doesn't negate itself exactly so that shows a lot because god's scripture would not have contradiction if it is contradiction it's not from god so that is an objective way to look into a scripture and then you have the history of prophet how he dealt with the jews and the christian and what message he proclaimed now if we tie up together that gives you a serious compelling evidence and then that message comes with a consequence, meaning if you follow it, you have paradise and Allah is not beating around the bush. Right. And Allah is saying, if we, if we don't follow it, that is suffering. And Allah is asking you to follow the path that will lead you to the happiness and joy. And Allah is keep asking you not to follow the path of destruction. Meaning, if you know the truth, yet reject it and you end up in the fire, who would you blame that? You can't blame God. So, so the, the, the message is, uh, is so profound. And Prophet Muhammad made many prophecies, meaning a prophet, someone who prophesies things, that thing will come into a, a place in few days time. And if you look at all the prophecy, give you one, for example, he said the Bedouin Arabs, he was living in a nomadic life, no building at that time, literally uh, facing sandstorm every day, nomadic life no technology no development he was saying there will be a time come when the bedouin arabs the bedouin arabs will be competing each other in making tall buildings making what making tall buildings okay now we see in dubai the burj khalifa the all this big tower and you find the competition between those arabs they are bedouin now how did that happen because of they started uh, digging oil out. They found that oil, like 100, 102 years, 100 years ago, something like that. I, I don't know exactly, but around 200 years, something around. So that shows that Prophet was aware of the knowledge that God had been informed, that they, they will do these things. And that's how Prophet, Prophet is able to share us those prophecies. And all of the prophecies, it's not like, okay, he make 10 prediction, and uh, we have five came true and five wrong, no. That's not the case. We have numerous prophecies. You can look into each of them. Looking at the pros and cons, of course you will find Islamophobes. They will come their, their own understanding, sure. putting their own understanding. But you, what you have to do as a Muslim, as a, someone who is seeker of the truth, you have to say, okay, let me see what they say on this prophecy and what they say on this prophecy. Sure, but I could say that you're going to walk down there, you're going to walk tomorrow about two miles and your shoelace is going to break. Yeah. Now, if that's happened, that just happens to happen, it doesn't make me a prophet. No, but like for example, that doesn't apply to Prophet Muhammad because Prophet Muhammad is someone who brings prophecy, who given us the Quran, who given us the teaching, who performed many miracles. So we have one someone that is only one prophet in history. He is called a historical prophet because they can trace him back. He really existed. Historically, they said Moses doesn't exist in the historian record. Why? Because the history was not recorded at that time. It doesn't necessarily mean that Moses didn't exist. Quran confirmed that Moses exists. We believe, but historically that they cannot be proven. But Muhammad, peace be upon him, can be proven through historic narrative. Like historian wrote about the documentary. Like for example, you can look it up a book called The Hundred by Michael Hart. And he mentioned Prophet Muhammad is number one. Number one. 
He himself is a Christian. Why did he put him as number one? Jesus Christ is number three. Because Prophet Muhammad fulfilled all the conditions. Like for example, he was a state leader. Jesus was not a state leader. Prophet Muhammad was someone who was married. Jesus was not married. So how did he live his life as a husband? He was an orphan. So he would understand an orphan's pain. Imagine, he did have a children. And he lost pretty much all of his children in his lifetime. So he will know the pain of those who lost his children. So an orphan say, oh, how can I find him as a role model? He would say, look, Prophet Muhammad, he himself is an orphan. If you, wanna, if you say, oh, I'm a father and I lost my children, can I find a guidance or who should I take lesson from? You can see Prophet Muhammad. He himself, in his, in his life, he lost his children. I think Fatima was the only one, only daughter alive while he was alive and rest of them are passed away before him. So it shows that Prophet God, the final messenger, gone through all the criterion for to be a guide for mankind. A guide is someone which you can imitate. Wherever you go, you need a guide. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, please and blessing be upon him, he was a guide for mankind. And Allah said, he said, he is beacon of light, Sirajam Munira, meaning we are in darkness. And the real way is to follow the Prophet's messenger by making sure that if you follow that message, that will send us to our destination, which is the paradise. So I hope, you know, think about it. This is a very profound message because our life is short, yes, is. absolutely short. And we need to make that decision before it's too late because Allah, there are people who in the day of judgment, they will tell, oh Allah send me back. Allah said, Qala Rabbi Allah send me back. Allah will say, no, the time is over. You didn't do when you should have been done this stuff. Now Allah throws divine wisdom. Allah said, if I send him again, he will again fall into disbelief. So look, we need to make sure we do our best, best shot in this life. Because the reality is start after death. We are living uh, in a time the reality will really hit back when we die and then we will face who? Allah. Can we say that? Oh, then Allah will say, did I not give you all this blessing? What happened to you? Why didn't you put your head to the floor? Why didn't you worship me? Then Maybe I can. Opportunities and exactly, things. exactly. So that's a profound message. I look it up, you know, inshallah. I hope Allah guide you to Islam. You know, shall I give you a copy of the Quran? I or have one. You have one. Yes, I was giving it earlier. Thank you, though. Yeah. It's very nice to meet you, sir. Very nice to meet you. I hope, you know, it's fruitful conversation we had. Yeah, and I hope yes. you, you can take some of the points and maybe think about it, you know. Serious life, serious decision. Yep. Anyway, you have a lovely evening. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Make dua for him. Inshallah, he looks very sincere. So may Allah guide him to Islam. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi